glad to be here. There is a powerful statement found in Councils on Stewardship, page 17, paragraph 1 and 2, that says, The power of God is manifested in the beating of the heart, in the actions of the lungs, and in the living current that circulates through the thousand different channels of the body. We are indebted to him for every moment of existence and for all the comforts of life. He loads us with his benefits. We are indebted to him for the food we eat, the clothes we wear, and the air we breathe. Without his special providence, the air would be filled with poison and pestilence. He is a bountiful benefactor and preserver. I believe that moment by moment, we are indebted to God for keeping us alive. And I don't know if it is being live streamed. If it is, um, welcome to our online audience. And plus also, thank you to our song um, leaders. And at this time, I will like to invite Pastor Isaac to give us the opening prayer. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for Another day you give to us, we invite you to open our hearts, our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Morning. Good to see you this morning. And I don't know if I'm on or not, but I lost connection. I had my phone was ready for the presentation. I'll just do it again. Okay, okay good, good. You know, I was able to create a presentation last night because as I told you, I lost my computer died and I lost all my presentations. So well, we continue with Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk. Do you know what the first day we talk about? First, we, this we call it the journey from doubt to faith. And we had the first question that Habakkuk was struggling with. Does God care? You know? And we talked about the first part in chapter 1 about God. Is he caring? Does God listening to my prayer? Why is there a lot of violence around the world? Why is there some issues there? And he was asking this question. Second question he was asking, which we talked about yesterday, was about the fairness of God. Is God fair? And we strug he struggled with the question about uh, Babylonian, how they will banish Judah. Babylon is wicked as well. And how comes you are going to uh, banish Judah? And this is what we spoke about last night, yesterday. And today we're going to speak about a new thing from Habakkuk, chapter 2, end of chapter 2. I'm sure many of you read many books, right? Were you able to find a book by the title, How to Lose It All? It's hard to find a book like that. You could find a book, say, How to avoid to lose it all. But today, we're going to speak and talk about how to lose it all. You know, according to the book of Habakkuk, he speaks about uh, Babylon. Babylon came in greedy and not, you know, they want to take over everything. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5, he says, because he is a greedy as a grave and like death is never satisfied, he gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the people. So Babylon are angry. Come and take over everything. 
again, was just related to our spiritual time, you know, the wrong teaching, the Babylonian's confusion, and this will happen at the end of the time as well. So two things we'll be talking about this morning. God's way and man's way. And we'll follow man's way. What's going to happen? So let's go to man's way. Habakkuk chapter, uh, chapter 2. It says, for man's way, he gain the whole world and lose yourself. So it's very easy, you know, when you're saying, if you want to lose it all, what do you do? Just follow man's way. There is no hard work on it, right? Just go, give yourself to the world, and you will lose it all. And this is what kind of happened, trying to help us to know. In fact, in Matthew, in chapter 16, verse 26 says, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet loses his soul? And what Habakkuk is trying to bring us to our attention today. So, uh, in Habakkuk chapter 2, there are about different O's. There are five different O's. He listing it in chapter 2. You can go back and read it today if you like to highlight it. We'll just only talk about five O's that Habakkuk, or Habakkuk is explaining to us. The first one it is in verse 6. Verse 6. It says, and each uh, O will talk about it. We'll talk about the sin and the consequences of sin and so on. So the first one is theft. He speaks in verse 6. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 6 says, O to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by exhortation. How long must this go on? And he speaks about Babylon, when they came to Judah, what did they do? They stole everything, right? Taking everything from the temple and stealing and destroying. And the Bible says, you shall not steal. Stealing, something is not good. You know, sometimes we think of stealing as maybe robbing a bank or breaking in, but also not to be sometimes wise using God's timing, this could be stealing as well. So that sin or the first lake or the first awe that Habakkuk speaks about is theft. And this was the sin. Let's see what God's judgment for it is. God says, you will lose all that you have taken. If you go verses 7 and 8, so we were in verse 6, now verse 7, God responds, and says, you will not, will not your debtors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their victim because you have blundered many nations. The peoples who are left will blunder you for you have shed man's blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. And this is the result of sin. There's Habakkuk saying theft, and there is a result for it as well. And let's move forward to the second, uh, second one. Second one is injustice. And if you go to verses, verse 9, Habakkuk says, verse 9, O to him who builds his realm, realm by unjust gain, to set his net, nest on high, to escape the clutches of ruin. So he's saying, people of Israel, or at that time there was injustice. And the book of Habakkuk is, is writing here, and he's talking about the injustice that happened to the nation. Again, he's bringing his concerns to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's bringing his concern to God, and he's kind of worried about that injustice. We know when Babylon came to Judah, they were mean, right? Like we see in nations now, you know. Nations are mean to each other. When they invade a land, they kill and destroy. They are unjust. Also, the spiritual Bible would be unjust with the beliefs of God. They were taken over. So he speaks about Babylon committed gross injustice in, or, in order to set their nets, nest on high. 
They wanted to be the first, you know. They want to be in control. And this is what speaks about injustice. That's why they conquered cities. They exiled the people foreign lands. And this is the second O that Habakkuk could speak about, injustice. Let's see what God's judgment for that. God says, you will forfeit your life. And verse t uh, Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it says, you have blotted the ruin of many people, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life the stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of woodwork will echo it. Said, you will suffer because of injustice. And we see uh, during that time also how Babylon suffered because they were unjust to many nations and they struggled with that. And in fact, when Habakkuk writing, writing the oath, is for us as well when we read. You know, we need to make sure, are we unjust to each other? How are we dealing with each other? You know, are we dealing like the world is dealing with each other? Or are we reflecting the character of Jesus Christ? And in Jeremiah, uh, chapter 22 says, verse 13, O to him who builds his uh, palace by unrighteousness. So watch out, you could have built your life in injustice and it's not good. It won't help you at all. In the end, it will be negative. So this was the second. Let's move for the third. O oh, that Habakkuk speaks to us is violence. And he speaks about violence. In verse 12, Habakkuk 2 says, or the title is hurting others to gain power for yourself. And we see it today. It's happening all around the world, you know. It says here in Habakkuk 2, uh, verse 12, O to him who builds a city with bloodish and establishes a town by crime. In fact, we live it, you know. We see it in the nations again. A nation trying to use violence. Sometimes you could say, hmm, I'm not a violent person. You know, I don't kill or I don't just do something. But sometimes your actions could be violent to others, right? So let's look to the character of Jesus Christ. And say, Lord, if you were in my shoes, how will you help me to respond to that? So kind of here, uh, speaking about violence and how Babylon dealt violently or with a violent way with the nations they invade, especially Judah. So he's struggling with violence here. Then we'll move into God's judgment as well. God's judgment said, all your efforts will come to nothing, right? You are trying to invade land. You are trying to kill. You are trying to destroy. But all this will be nothing. Because this is how the world is dealing with it. This is how man deals. If you want to lose it, you will deal with theft, violence, and all these things that we're talking about. Has not, in Habakkuk 2, chapter 13 and 14, has not the Lord Almighty de uh, determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire? You know, ma man's work sometimes make it worse. That's why if you want to lose it all, just follow man's desires. Follow what man wants. What man wants? Power. When you, this power, you like to be violent, destroy and kill as King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he just wanted to take it all over. He had arrogance as well. That's why we need to look to our characters. Do we have these characters in our lives? I believe, you know, we live in a, a Christian place. We are where we dedicate our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. But still, the devil still can attack us. You know, can this could use that to take us away from the Lord. That's why we need to renew our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ every day. Every day is very important as well. And this is the judgment that among the people. Then we'll speak to the fourth point is exaltations. Uh, in Habakkuk 2, verse 15, but taking advantage of others is to gain pleasure for yourself. 
Be careful not to take advantage of someone. You know, I, uh, sometimes because I'm a pastor, you know, it's hard to say no to some people. And someone needed help. And I said, yes, yes. Then I came to a point, I felt that that person is using me, you know. That was too much. And like, finally that person just called, you know, and uh, it was almost nine in the evening. And I have too much to do and busy and getting ready with my kids. Call me, can you go and pick up this thing for me? Finally, I was able to say no, right? Say no. No sometimes is very important in the situation. So be careful that someone could be using you. And the other way, be careful that you don't use someone, right? That's why it's very important. This is why the Israelites among the people of Babylon was using Judah to destroy and kill. Habakkuk 2.15, it says, O to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wine skin till they are drunk, so, they, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies, you know? That's horrible. And speaks also to be careful not to use any something, you know, even your device, you could misuse it to do something horrible as well. So it's what the people of Babylon or the nation of Babylon were doing to the nations and to Judah as well. And what's God's judgment to that? God says, you will be filled with shame and disgrace. And verse 16 and 17, you know when uh, uh, Noah, right, became drunk. What happened to one of his sons? Kind of used the opportunity, was exposed to that, right? Was cursed. Noah was cursed him. I bring shame to him. That's why, let's be careful. If you see evil, just be away from it, right? It's what the Lord says. Do not even come close to it because you will be ashamed. You will be filled with the shame in a state of glory. It's what the Bible is telling us. And these are the odds that uh, Habakkuk described to us as well. The last one, the last O that Habakkuk talked to us in chapter 2, it says idolatry. And idolatry, which is trusting something other than God to direct your life. Be careful to trust anything to direct you away from God. Sometimes we trust devices more than God. Sometimes we trust money more than God. Sometimes we trust any other object than God. If we do that, we lose it all. And this is what Habakkuk says in chapter 2, verse 19. He says, O to him who says to wood, come to life, or to lifeless stone, wake up, can give uh, guidance, it is covered with gold and silver. There is no breath on it. So be careful not to worship idols. And we know that we don't have any idols today. But anything take you away from God could be your idol. And this is what Habakkuk is reminding us with. Also Habakkuk says, this was, uh, oh, what God's judgment is. You will be deceived and disappointed. So if you worship other idols or other items, we, you will be deceived. And the verse in uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18 as well. And this was quickly man's way. So man's way, you lose it all. It's what Habakkuk chapter 2 telling us. You have five O's, theft, you know, violence, and adultery, exploitations, all this stuff is man's way where you can lose it all. Quickly, for a minute, let's see God's way. You know, God's way is lose your life for Christ and you find it. Very simple. Lose your life for Christ and you'll find it. And this is God's way. So if you see, man's way, easy, you can lose it. But God's way is you find your life. And I'll read that verse. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. That's what Christ said. So hopefully today, you look, you go back and read Habakkuk chapter 2, 
will help you to understand, you know, if you want to lose it all, it's easy. Just follow the odds that he explained, you know, like the theft, injustice, violence, exploitations, adultery. These are man's way. But God's way is to give him your life. So my prayer for us this morning as we are starting our day, say, Lord, I give my heart to you. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, that you are our Savior, that you are our God. Lord, this morning we give our hearts to you, our minds to you. I just pray for my friends as they are, as they are starting their day, Lord, please guide them and help everyone in their work. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord for the presentation. And to our online audience, we will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m.